Good morning, everyone. Uh, we have been asked uh, to do a series of talks on some basic psychiatric topics. Um, so we'll be covering it over this week or two. And today I'm going to talk about the psychiatric assessment. And because of the time constraints, it will be done in two days. Most of you would find it very simplistic because they are like some of the basic things that we follow on a day-to-day -day basis when we come across psychiatric patients. But I guess it's, you know, it's useful to refresh uh, the things that we know. Uh, the purpose of any psychiatric interview is uh, first and foremost to arrive at a, a differential diagnosis or a diagnosis of the patient's condition. But it's not just about the diagnosis, it's also, about to, find, it's also to find out the etiology of why the patient has developed this condition. Uh, in other words, to uh, come, a, come to a diagnostic formulation. And because the psychiatric assessment is quite comprehensive, it helps us develop a therapeutic trusting relationship with the patient, which would help in patient recovery and uh, treatment. And we do the psychiatric assessment in a variety of settings. You know, um, often we do it in a psychiatric emergency department where we, where we come across patients presenting with acute psychiatric emergencies. In such cases, you know, we will not be able to go through a complete history because it will be inappropriate uh, to actually ask them where they were born or go into the detailed personal history. So where, there our focus will be on the presenting complaint and risk and the mental state. But we do it in an outpatient clinic where, we, where the patient is more accessible or we do it in a ward when we see the patient for the first time. And we also do it as a part of liaison psychiatry where we see patients on a bedside when uh, the different medical and surgical wards refer the patient to us. And depending on the setting, you know, the psychiatric assessment will vary slightly. Uh, and we also do it on a different patient groups. You know, as you know, we, we treat adult patients, old age patients, ch children, uh, patients with learning disability. And again, you know, the psychiatric assessment will have to be tailored to suit the people, the patient group. So when we are asked to assess a patient with psychiatric problems, we have to know the background information. You know, who has brought the patient to us? Um, is it you know, referred by someone or did the patient come by themselves or did the family bring the patient or did the police bring the patient and we need to gather the information as to what their concerns were. So we have to, you know, that is quite integral to know what we are actually looking at. And whenever we assess a patient, you know, uh, whenever we um, go to do a psychiatric assessment, it's very important that we do a proper introduction and explain to them that it's going to take some time, you know, we have to give them, we have to explain that it will take about one hour and you have to be patient and there will be some questions that may not be relevant to you because that's quite important because some of them, you know, will be caught off guard when we ask them, ask them about the symptoms which they don't experience. But nevertheless, it's important that we, you know, go through all the symptoms. So it's quite important that we explain to them beforehand um, and the patients would be more cooperative if we do that. And we have to ask them first, we have to start by asking them the demographic details as to their name, age, nationality, and their marital status. And the most important part of a psychiatric assessment is your presenting complaint. So why has this patient presented to you at this point in time in this way? And we have to, you know, we, we usually follow a fairly medical model when we actually explore the symptoms, you know, as to when did it start, when did it all start, and how has it progressed, you know, has it got worse over the time, um, then, you know, is there anything that makes it worse. So we have to go through the chronological account of the patient's symptoms. And we have to find out if there are any triggers or precipitants that actually set off these symptoms. You know, usually, you know, it could be a life event or a concomitant alcohol or drug abuse or non-adherence to medication that would have caused, you know, the problems right now. So it's quite important to find out because they might be genetically predisposed to develop a mental illness, but more often there is a life event or some trigger that has set off the symptoms at this point in time. Then we need to know what their coping strategies are because the symptoms are obviously distressing to the patient. So what, how do they cope with these symptoms? You know, do they, um, have they withdrawn themselves? Have they stopped going to work, school? 
or have they started you know using abusing alcohol or drugs to cope with their distressing problems or have they you know are they acting upon you know their um, their symptoms you know are they um, harming themselves and what the effect is on their social occupational and interpersonal functioning so um, that will enable us to understand the severity of the problem you know if they have stopped doing the things that they usually do it's a clear indication that you know it has affected them in a big way and we have to explore the risk it's really important and risk assessment is a very separate topic in itself and it will be covered on a later day but we have to explore the risk you know risk of self-harm risk to others and there are various other risks so the risk will be covered separately then we go to the past psychiatric history if the patient is not you know if, if the patient has had a previous psychiatric contact we need to know when was the first time the patient has had a psychiatric contact even if the patient has not had a psychiatric contact we need to know whether there were any concerns in the past when, when they were growing up that concerned them then we need to know whether these problems had required psychiatric hospitalization because that would again show us that you know when they become well they become really unwell so we need to know what how many admissions they have had and what treatments they have received including psychological treatment whether they've cooperated with the treatment uh, what were the what was the functioning level over the years have they been able to get back to the things that they do once they become well or has the uh, functioning deteriorated over time and it's really important that you explore you know their past risks you know have they have they been any episodes of self-harm or violence um, and what are the possible reasons of relapse? You know, why did the patient relapse? Did they stop the medication? Have they been drinking alcohol? Or you know, what are the possible reasons? Are they going through a breakup? So there are there could be many reasons. So you have to ask them. You know, why why they have presented in this way? And then we go to the medical history, and um, a lot of medical conditions can coexist with psychiatric problems. Some of them can uh, can lead to psychiatric problems. So we need to find out if they have any comorbid physical illness and comorbid physical illness is also important in determining, you know, the psychiatric medication that we would administer, um, whether they've had any recent hospitalization or surgery, any head injury, because that could be the reason for their behavioral change. And all the current medications should be documented. Uh, family history we have to ask them you know whether there whether there is anybody in their family you know even in their first degree relatives who have had a similar problem and also any other psychiatric illness and as you all know you know alcohol and drug abuse and suicide and all you know if there is a if there is a history of it in the family the chances uh, the risk is higher for the patient so you need to ask them um, quite explicitly then we come to the personal history. Um, personal history, we go through, you know, where they were born, brought up, and you need to kind of, you need to try and get flavor of their culture because that usually influences, you know, their symptoms um, and what the family atmosphere was like, you know, what, how how close they were to their parents, you know, is there is there a supportive network in the family, uh, how they were, how close they were to the uh, their siblings, and whether they have had any early childhood difficulties or even abuse and things like that should not be missed you know it should be done um, it should be asked sensitively but it should be asked and we need to get a, a history of their education and how they have performed what was it like in the school their relationship at school you know have they coped well at school have they had any difficulties how much they've completed their education are they working and even in the occupational history we need to find out if they have been able to hold down to a stable a stable job or have they, you know, because that all that points to instability. If they have had frequent change of jobs, if they have problems frequently at uh, work, workplace. And in, in the psychosexual history, we ask them, you know, um, about if they have a current partner and how the relationship is like. Is there, is there a stable relationship? Is there a supportive family at home? Um, a drug and alcohol uh, history is quite vast and we need to, um, uh, you know, if there, if there is a positive um, drug and alcohol history, we need to find out, you know, when they started the behavior. Is there a tendency to addiction? 
uh, what do they use how much do they use how often do they use um, and you know especially in drug abuse we need to find out if they have any habits like sharing the needles or injecting behaviors and all that and um, you know drug and alcohol um, if, the, if there is an extensive addiction it, it falls within the remit of drug and alcohol addiction center so it's a pro it would be appropriate to refer to them for their for their expert care if there is an extensive uh, drug and alcohol history but um, some people would have a dual diagnosis and in which case we would have to know in detail what their drug and alcohol uh, problems are like and we need to find out you know if they have her forensic history if they have been in trouble with the law because all this will give us some idea about their personality, their nature of problems, um, and it will help us in assessing the risk and managing them. Uh, social history is really important because even in you know in Kuwait, it's a family who takes care of the patient. So we need to know if, you know who is the primary carer of the patient, how much support the patient has, and we need to involve them you know at the um, earliest um, so that we get a better outcome and we need to know how much of a social network the patient has outside mm. it, then we come to the pre-morbid personality and pre-morbid personality is you know best asked to ask to a person who knows the patient well not to the patient themselves so we need to know what their character traits are like what their confidence levels are like because we then we know you know what kind of a person they were before and it will also help us understand you know how much of uh, improvement we are expecting because if if somebody is naturally quiet you know we cannot expect them to be chatty after treatment so we know what kind of personality they are and even somebody who's anxious or obsessional by nature are more likely to develop anxiety disorders um, in the future and you know phys don't forget physical examination because it's really important in a psychiatric assessment um, so we need to you know record their vital signs we need to do the uh, basic blood test and we need to perform a um, physical examination as well uh, the mental state examination will be covered tomorrow um, is there anything